Hey! 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 Don't you know not to get between Sparkle and her ciabattas? Who's Sparkle? Me! The cat with all the ciabattas! And what is a ciabatta? I don't even know. But I don't care. All I know is it's soft and it's spread and it's square. <laughs> How do they get it to be so square? What are they, wizards? When I'm with the ciabatta, it's like, I don't know. All is right in the world. Hey, what are you doing? Hands off my ciabatta! Oh. <coughs> my parents just don't understand. I am the ciabatta queen. Ciabattas are only for me. The first time my parents brought ciabattas home, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. But then again, neither did I. What are you? Something inside that thin little plastic bag was calling me. It was my first ciabatta. My parents thought, hmm, weird. They figured it was a one-time thing. No way, baby. After that, it was Jabata City, population one. Monday, Jabatas. Tuesday, Jabatas. Wednesday, Fox. Thursday, Jabatas. Friday, Jabatas. Whoa. Whoa! They're slippery little things, aren't they? But we started to have a little problem at home. Apparently, no one was getting a chance to eat the ciabattas my parents are bringing home. I just couldn't help myself. They thought they could trick me with any old bread. Ha! No, I don't want your croissant. Too circly. Or your hot dog bun. Way too long! How dare you try to trick me! So you, you, don't, you don't want this or this? I want ciabattas all day, every day! Real ciabattas! And toy ciabattas! What a world! And there's no way you're getting these out of my furry paws! Oh, okay, great! You got one! Wow! But these are still mine! These will be mine soon. If I can just get uh, maybe a pair of scissors. Okay, better get back to it. Bye. I said bye. I'm Toby. And I love this rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's my best rock. <laughs> Rock, 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 rock! My mom doesn't get it, but I don't care! Oh no, it's dirty! Bath time! That's better! Just me and my rock, together forever! I got a skateboard! Let's try it with this. Let's try it with this. What is this? Mm -mm, nope. I don't think so. Skateboard. I just want my rock. You guys, he hated the skateboard so much that he got scared and he broke his rock. He is very upset. He went inside. My rock! She thinks she can just find a new one? Toby, come here. I only want my rock. Oh, no. I must be alone now. This is what it's like This is what it is In the shadow of 
time. No, I won't give up. We're going to fix you, Little Rock. I don't know if this is gonna work, buddy. <laughs> it has to work. It has to! Now we wait. You excited? Is Rock okay? Rock, speak to me. Rock! We're together again at last! You're my rock, Rock! <laughs> Willie was so afraid of doorways, wooden floors, and going downstairs. Come on! You can do it! that his foster mom had to carry him outside to go to the bathroom. And once he was out there, he was scared to come back. I guess it was because Willie had never lived in a house before, so everything was new to him. And scary. It's okay. But he'd need to learn how to live inside before he could find his forever home. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, goodness. Come on. He wanted to be brave, but he was just too nervous. Until he found the one new thing in the house that wasn't scary. Carlo. <laughs> Willie was so excited to meet Carlo. It wasn't mutual. Carlo wasn't into high-energy dogs. Carlo was a rule follower. And his most important rule was, only one dog in the bed, please. He was not interested in Willie's antics. Then one day, Willie's foster mom was getting ready to take him to the store. And Carlo was like, me too, I wanna come. When Carlo got in the car, it was like something changed right away. And when they got to the store, they couldn't stop chasing each other. It was the strangest thing. All of a sudden, Carlo didn't want space anymore. He wanted to be wherever Willie was. In a bed, in the yard, in a different bed. Oh, is that your Carlo? There was one major difference between them. Willie wasn't much of a rule follower. And Carlo was the first to let everyone know. Yeah, tell him, Carlo. Get out of their yard, dude. And then, a funny thing happened. <laughs> Willie started feeling braver. The house didn't feel so new and scary with Carlo by his side. Finally, Willie decided he was ready. He wanted to conquer his fears. He was nervous. Oh my goodness, good job. But he went down one shaky paw at a time. Until. Good boy. You're doing it. Good boy. Then one day, when Willie's foster mom opened the door, she couldn't believe what she saw. Willie finally felt at home living inside. And it was all thanks to his patient best friend. Willie was ready to find his forever home. Are you gonna miss Will Will? Carlo knew things wouldn't be the same when Willie left. Not only had Carlo helped Willie be brave, but Willie had also helped Carlo let down his guard. But that's when they got good news. Willie was only moving down the street, which could only mean one thing. Lots more of this. Because Carlo and Willie know, when you meet a best friend who helps you do something scary or something new, you'll find your way back to each other.
When Abba was in danger, something very unusual saved his life. Honey? How in the world could honey save a turtle? Well, Abba had gotten tangled in a ghost net. Basically, a fishing net that's been lost or left in the ocean. Sometimes, curious turtles like Abba swim into them by mistake. And this time, Abba was so stuck, he could barely move his flippers. He was afraid he'd never swim again. But these rescuers said, we'll show that net who's boss. They were gonna do whatever it took to get Abba free. Even though he was scared, Abba knew that if his rescuers could be so brave, he could be brave too. But the net was very tangled. It was pinching Abba hard. Abba's new friends didn't want to accidentally hurt him. This net was gonna need to come off one string at a time. We're just trying to just get them slightly out of the way. Abba knew they were trying to be gentle. So he tried to be patient. Even though there were so many strings to cut, the rescuers didn't quit until they got them all. Abba was free. Take that, ghost net. But this turtle rescue wasn't over yet. Abba wanted to swim away, but he couldn't. The net had injured his flippers. Good thing his rescuers were vets. So instead of going for a swim, Abba was going for a ride to get those flippers fixed. Abba was nervous. He'd never been to a vet before. Was he going to get a shot? Did he need stitches? Were they gonna operate? Would they make him swallow a big pill? Also, what's a pill? When they got to the clinic, he wasn't quite sure what to expect, but he was pretty surprised when they pulled out a big box of honey. Humans have been using honey to help cuts heal for thousands of years. And it works on turtles too. The doctor spread the honey on Abba's flippers. A little here and a little here. Then they carefully wrapped his flippers in bandages. Abba was like, honey, do your thing. As Abba healed, he started to get his strength back and his appetite. It's a lot easier to catch food when you're not stuck in a net. It didn't take long before Abba's flippers were back to full flipping speed. He was feeling like his strong and wild self again. The honey had done its thing and it was time for another ride. He was going back to the sea at last. Here we go. Abba was so happy to be in the ocean again. He swam as fast and as far as he could. He never wanted to stop. But he'll always remember his rescuers. And he'll never forget how he was saved by honey. My name's Tuna, and I have a secret. Do you want to know what it is? My parents sure do. Tuna, what were you doing? You'd love to know where I go all day, wouldn't you? Oh, you think if you give me treats, I'll tell you? Nope, never gonna happen. But I'll take another treat. <laughs> I'm gone for hours at a time. Tuna! Come on. What are you doing? That's probably why they put a GPS tracker on me to figure it out. I'm just fascinated by this. This is what you do? But they still don't know. I'll tell you, though. Come closer. Okay, stop. That's perfect. I, Tuna the Cat, am a master at tricking people into leaving presents at my house! <laughs> How, you ask? Allow me to enlighten thee. It all begins on my front porch. I sit there, looking cute as a cucumber. I'm so adorable. People passing by can't help but visit. 
with a face like this, who could resist? To my devious delight, they often bring packages filled with goodies in them. What kind of goodies, you ask? That's for me to know and you to wonder. <laughs> Once they arrive, phase two begins. I distract them with my special moves. Behold, my moves! The tailocopter. The roly-poly. The wall slide. The wiggle and flop. And of course, the loud meow. Simple, but effective. By the time they're finished petting me, they've forgotten all about their things. And they leave! <laughs> Behold my stuff! This house plant! This couch! This black brick! This thingy! But hiding my secret has become... When are you coming in? Let's just say harder to hide. Not from my parents. No. <laughs> but from him. I think he knows. Why can't you just be like the dogs, huh? They know how to mind their own business. No matter. I'm like a ghost. Whoosh. Other than you, no one will ever know my secret. For I am Tuna! A master of deception, a shadow of shadows. Perhaps one day we shall meet and your stuff shall become mine. <laughs>
isn't feeling well. She weighs 63 pounds, much heavier than a dog her size should be. She has to walk so slowly and can't go far before she needs a break. But it's not your fault, Bertha. For a lot of your life, people would feed you too much food. And you didn't get a chance to run around. And now, you can't even stretch to scratch behind your ear. We know Bertha wants to move like other dogs. Without feeling out of breath. So, we're going to help your new foster mom, Meredith, get you back to tiny dog size. Are you ready to exercise? We're taking you to the rehab center where Meredith works. It's a place sick animals go to get better. For your first exercise, Meredith has a special water treadmill for you and an orange vest to help you float. It should make exercising easier, right? But you don't seem to like it. Maybe this one is too hard for right now. You take a quick nap, pup, while we think of something else. Okay, forget the treadmill. What about swimming? You just need to float and slowly move your legs. See? Much easier. Bertha's doing the doggy paddle. We'll swim a little every day. Until... Yeah! Bertha, this is amazing. Think you're ready for the treadmill again? We know you don't like it, but it's really working. You're losing a little weight each day. You can finally stretch to scratch your ear. Meredith is so proud of you. Go Bertha, go Bertha, go Bertha. <laughs> and so are we. You're ready for a little dog obstacle course. Drum roll, please. When we first met you, you could barely walk. And now you're stepping over hurdles and climbing down stairs. It took almost a year and a half of hard work, but you finally weigh 29 pounds. The perfect weight for a dog like you. You did it, Bertha. You and Meredith worked so hard. And guess what? She's not gonna be your foster mom anymore because she's adopting you. Now that's a happy pup who's just the right size. You are all wrapped up in there. Ronan's a tiny little bat living with us while we take care of him. He can already hang upside down. But if he wants to fly like his friends, he's gotta get big. So we'll start one milk drop at a time. Tiny little bat mouth, tiny little dropper. He doesn't even take a break, not even for a bath. When he does get tired, we wrap him in a blanket. It's just like his mom's wings. And he's hungry again. Today, we woke up to Ronan doing this. It's almost like he thinks he's ready to fly. But we know he needs to get stronger first. And getting stronger means figuring out how to eat like a bat instead of a baby. He's thinking, why is this milk not going directly in my mouth? That's more like it. It doesn't take long for him to try eating upside down. Okay, you don't have to stick your whole head in there. 
still hungry? Hey there, muscle man. A few weeks later and Ronan's feeling strong. He's grabbing everything in sight. Uh, Ronan, don't look now. There is a vampire behind you. And he's hungry again. We can tell Ronan can't wait to fly. He's dancing back and forth and flapping his strong wings. But we don't think he's ready just yet. Not until he takes a break from us and starts playing with actual bats. So far, he's mostly like, a bat, get me out of here. Ronan, I don't know how to tell you this, but you are a bat. Let's give it a try. Boop. See, you already have so much in common. Now, Ronan fits right in with the other bats. But the one thing he really wants to do is fly. But is he ready? He stretches his muscles, gives a big flap, and... Oof! You can do this, Ronan. He's flying! He's left his bat blanket behind. We'll miss him on our shoulders, but he's where he belongs. Upside down, on his own, with a treehouse of friends and a mouthful of food. Sorry, jump too far. Thank you. Okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> Hello! My name is Seamus. I'm a bird. I live in a house, but not a birdhouse. But there's birds here. There's this bird, and this bird, and this bird, and this bird, and that bird, and we all live in the house. But it's not just birds. There's also these things. I don't know what they are. They have wings like birds, but they're not birds, and I'm very confused by them. Until I figure out what they are, I am just going to call them Flappy Tigers. If that is their real name, I think I deserve a prize or something, don't you? But besides birds and the Flappy Tigers, there's also people! Real people! Giant people! They found me when I was a tiny little baby bird. My feathers looked weird because I was a baby. Now my feathers look like this, just a reminder, but they used to look like this. Grown-up feathers, baby feathers, grown-up feathers, baby feathers. Ah, memories. I would have been a goner if I hadn't been found, but I was found, and that's why I'm here talking to you. The people raised me and got me big and strong until I was ready to go back to the wild, but I didn't have a family. So the people became my family. It's pretty great. I really love it here. The birds, the humans, the flappy tigers too, I guess. It's all just the best. I have many luxurious luxuries in this house that are very special and important to me. For example, each and every morning, I take baths in this little dish, which I will now demonstrate. Watch closely, please. Hello! Oh, I'll get a towel for the mess. Sorry! Don't worry, nobody's mad about the water. I promise, we're a very close family. They even let me sip right from their drinks. Sip, slurp, sip. Um, <laughs> excuse me, you left the lid on. The lid. The lid. The lid on the drink. I wish to sip the drink, but there's a lid on it. <sighs> so forgetful. I love everybody here. We're always doing fun stuff, basically all the time. Like crazy freestyle bird dance dance-offs. Go, 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 go. Dance, dance, dance. And we play this game I invented called Attack the Hand. I'm a getcha. I'm a getcha. 
It's really just the best over here. I love them so much. But there's one little thing that's maybe not exactly 100% perfect, even though it doesn't really bother me that much. Seriously? What's going on with these flappy tigers? They drink sugar water, but I'm not allowed to drink their sugar water? <laughs> what? And everything seems fine, and we're getting along great, and then they flap! <sighs> I've got more studying to do to crack the case. But that's not the point of this story. The point is that I have a big family, and I love them so much! That's all. That's really the whole point. I love them, and I thought you should know it. Also, when you're a baby bird, sometimes your feathers look different. Also, pigeons are good dancers. Also, lids do not belong on cups. Don't block me from your cups, because I need to sip from them. <laughs> Thank you. Also, I love these people so very much. I needed them, and they were there for me. And that's really what family's all about, right? Did I already say the love part? I should make a list. Oh, last thing. Don't forget how to take a bath. It's like this. <laughs> Ooh, huh? Ooh. I uh, <laughs> might need a mop this time instead. <laughs> it was a very special night on the beach. Anna had just spotted a mama sea turtle who'd come ashore to lay her eggs. The mama made a hole for the eggs to stay in until the babies inside grew big enough to hatch. Anna felt lucky just to see something so special. But she wasn't alone. There were other people on the shore who wanted to take the eggs away and sell them. Anna knew the best place for the eggs was on the beach. So someday the baby turtles could wiggle their bodies right toward the water and join their mama in the ocean. If the people took the eggs, the babies might never hatch. As soon as the mama turtle said goodbye to her eggs, the people tried to dig them up. But Anna got there first. The mama turtle had no idea her eggs were in any danger, so it was up to Anna to protect them. She decided to take them home, away from anyone who might try to dig them up. Anna didn't have a beach in her backyard, but she did have a bucket she could fill with sand. It wasn't as perfect a home for eggs as the sand by the ocean, but here, Anna could stand guard. Every day, she watched the eggs and waited. She wanted to be ready to take the turtles back as soon as the eggs started to crack. Sometimes, she wasn't sure if they ever would. It takes around two months for them to hatch, but these were taking a little bit longer, so we're like, we're not sure if they're gonna make it. All she could do was hope. But two months later, Anna heard a scratching sound outside. And when she went to check on the bucket, one by one, they crawled out of the sand. So many tiny baby turtles, all excited to head back to the ocean. But uh, where was the ocean? Anna had to move fast. Baby sea turtles need to get to the ocean quickly after hatching. She went back to the beach and let the babies out of the bucket. Anna was a little nervous. Did she make it in time? Would the babies know what to do? They were only just born. She watched and waited until the turtles started to crawl. Anna was so happy. But she couldn't leave yet. She wanted to stand guard until every turtle made it to the sea. And right as the last turtle left the beach, she saw something. 
a big sea turtle was swimming in the waves. There was no way to know for sure, but Anna likes to think that the mama turtle came back just to watch her babies crawl home and to thank Anna for keeping her little ones safe. Haley the... <coughs> Haley the sheep. <coughs> Haley the sheep is a bad girl. <coughs> she screams like this all the time. <coughs> Haley, please stop screaming. <coughs> stop doesn't mean louder. <coughs> bad girl. <coughs> Don't let her cute face fool you. Her very cute face. What a sweet little sheep. <coughs> ah! Haley, don't scream at me. <coughs> Haley screams all day long. <coughs> at everything. <coughs> and everyone. And nobody knows why. <coughs> Are they mad screams? <coughs> Happy screams? <coughs> Who knows? You're driving your parents <coughs> crazy. Strong. Can anything make you stop? Uh, ooh, what about this pretty flower I picked for you? Hey, that's not a snack. Bad girl, well, maybe for a sheep, it is a snack? And it did stop you from screaming. How about another flower? Well, how about that? Hmm, I wonder what else you like to eat. Do you like leaves? Aw, oh, you sure do love your sometimes weird treats. I guess you were just yelling because you were hungry. I know the feeling, Haley. You're not a bad girl at all. You're actually a good girl. All right, you keep being a good girl out here. You want to come inside? Uh, sure. Just behave, please. <coughs> ah! Haley, no screaming inside! <coughs> this is even better than screaming outside! <coughs> Bad girl! Haley, <coughs> what? <coughs> what do you want? <coughs> fine, fine, I'll get you more snacks. Here, have some cucumber slices. Aw, look at you, eating off a plate politely. You're even sharing. See, you can be a good girl. Oh, sorry, there's no more. <laughs> Haley, why are you looking at me like that? Haley, get out of the fridge. <laughs> Are you helping with the dishes or looking for more food? Because it definitely looks like you're looking for more food. Stop begging for chips. Those aren't good for you. <laughs> Don't yell because you aren't getting what you want. Hey! That's rude. No headbutting your humans for treats. And definitely no headbutting your little siblings. <laughs> Bad girl. I'm not giving you more snacks. <laughs> you can have some water. But just please don't spill it everywhere, okay? Hey, you're drinking that very carefully. Not a drop anywhere. And now you're politely sipping tea? How fancy. You do some bad stuff. But we shouldn't get mad at you. After all, you did have a tough time growing up. I mean, look at how little you were. You were actually too little. Your mom had to take such special care of you. But being little didn't stop you. Look at you playing with the big kids. Good girl! That must be why you yell so loud. Because it was the only way the little sheep could be heard. Aw, you weren't even small enough to be carried. Wait, you're still being carried? 
I guess that's not technically bad. Whoa! Food stealing is definitely bad! And you were just sharing! But really? Your love of treats is out of control. You're treat crazy! Which is also something you learned from when you were a little lamb. All right, all right. I'll give you a break. Your parents don't seem to mind how naughty you are. What do you want for breakfast today? They even let you yell at their wedding. Because you're a member of their family. A noisy one, but family. To me, that sounds like a good girl. You're a good little lamb most of the time. Sure, you can be a little pushy with the treats, but being hungry can make anyone cranky. And you've always got a smile ever since you were a little lamb. We love you. You bad, <clears throat> excuse me. You bad girl. You there, yes you. I must ask you, how could a cat with a bow tie like this, and a mustache like this, and a pool like this, and a mustache like this, be replaced? Oh, I remember the good old days when I was a solo cat. Oh, we had our fun. Charlo, I ask myself, that's me, Charlo. Could life get any better than this? And then one day, they found Olivia. I had my feelings about other cats. And yet, here we were. I was not amused. My days as the favorite seemed numbered. Our parents sent us to our own rooms. But no matter how hard I tried to stay away, I was drawn to her. I started spending all day just watching her. And then I felt the sudden urge to Play. What is my body doing? Then, out of nowhere... Open the window! Let us play together for the first time! I had thought I loved my life as an only cat. Just me and my many toys. But this whole time, had I simply been waiting for someone who would play back? Before I knew it, we were chasing each other through the halls. It seems we were not meant to be enemies, but best friends. With everything in common. As much as I hate to admit it, I love having a sister. Olivia pretty much runs the show. And sure, I'm never alone. But I don't mind so much. Because what is a pool, or a bow tie, or a mustache without a best friend by your side? When Reuben and his mom found Peta the magpie, they didn't think they'd be able to get her back to her parents. I run over to my mom. I tell her, Mom, 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 I found this baby bird. And they couldn't just leave her outside. She was too little to be alone. And I thought in my heart, no, he was born to live, have a life, have a family. So in she came to the incubator. I would feed her all day, every single day. Come on, guys. Peta needed help getting bigger before she could go back to the wild. And Reuben 
would be there every step of the way. Today I think he's about five or six days old now. Soon, pretty soon, he's going to be able to open his eyes, but I know he's just too little. Every day, Reuben made sure Peta was growing. And soon... He's old enough now to open his eyes, see? Peta couldn't walk yet, and she definitely wasn't ready to go outside. So for now, she spent her days getting stronger in the coziest spot, Reuben's hands. And little by little... So he's 13 days old now, and look at all his feathers! And his eyes are open, everything. He's so cool and gorgeous. This is day, what, 14? Yeah. And look at him, how he's getting all his feathers yeah, now. Yeah, he's so big. Look at his wings. One day, Reuben realized they had a problem. He's starting to get a little too big for the incubator. It was time for a new home. It's got a little window so he can look out and outside and see but soon he's going to be living it. But he's too young for that just yet. She wasn't a baby anymore, but she still needed to learn to use her legs and someday her wings before she could go live outside. But Reuben knew what to do. He became Peta's teacher in all things magpie. So right now we're trying to teach him how to walk. Peta. Look, he's trying. He's trying to get strength up. Ooh. See how he pushes himself? Peter, come on. You hungry? You hungry? Peter, come on. Peter. It's the first like, long walk he's ever done outside this cave. So we're just listening to noises of magpies so he can learn how to make noises of himself about magpies. Soon she would be ready to go outside for the first time. But for now, her favorite spot was still here. Or here. Every time I walk over, she flips over for a belly scratch. Peta had grown so much, and she was an expert walker. Well, hopper. So Reuben decided she was ready for this. We can introduce her to outside. <gasps> Having fun, Peta? But Peta still had a lot to learn, like finding food on her own. So Reuben started new bagpie lessons out here. I put worms in front of her. She started learning how to find worms on her heart. But there was one big thing Peta still needed to learn how to do. Fly. Reuben could tell Peta really wanted to try. So they kept practicing. And then one day, he took her out to the yard. Reuben and his mom knew that it wouldn't be long before Peta would be ready to go home to the wild. Whenever she wants to go into the wild, she can go. That's where she belongs. She makes that decision. She honestly has brought so much joy to the family. She might fly away any day. Oh, we don't know. But when she goes, Reuben knows he will never forget her. If I just left her out there, she wouldn't have changed my life. When she wants to go into the world, she's probably going to tell her kids that there's a boy named Reuben that I want you guys to visit. Oh my God. Nanus is a bit of a grub. She doesn't like people. She doesn't like other animals. Oh, I'm so sorry. She doesn't even like her own mom. Honestly, she might not like anything at all. No, 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 no. Nanus, they're not even bothering you. Come on. But Nanus can't dislike everything. Maybe she's just misunderstood. I mean, come on, look at that pretty kitty face. Okay, maybe not. This is gonna be trickier than I thought. She's really starting to make us nervous. Hey, little kitty. Oh my goodness. Let's try a walk, Nanus. As long as we don't run into anyone, we should be fine. 
So far, so good. <gasps> oh no. Hi there. What a fun thing get. Oh, she's not. Oh, so sorry about that. All right, let's keep walking. Oh no, not another cat. Manus, slow down. Honey, no. No. Oh my goodness. Leave them alone, Nanus! Well, that walk was unsuccessful. Nanu is okay, I have to take it off of you. And Nanu is, I have to take it off of you. All right, seriously? Okay, come on, Nanu. Nanus, let her take the leash off. And she's gone. Nanus, there's gotta be something or someone you like. Oh! Nanus! I want my coffee. <laughs> well, if you're gonna be mean, you stay inside while we have fun outside. Oh no! Here we go again. Be careful, be careful. What? Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Nanus, come on! <laughs> Nanus, what are we gonna do with you? It's like you hate happiness, and you don't like us, and you don't want us to have fun, and you don't want to be around us, but you have to be around us to make sure we're not having fun? But you don't like being around us, and that makes you mad to have to be around us to make sure we're not having fun, but you could just leave us alone to have fun, but you don't like that, so you come around. What is it? I guess we'll never know what makes you happy, Nanus. Huh, no, don't even bother. She's pretty rude. What? <laughs> what is going on right now? Nanus <laughs> loves grandpa? Oh my God. <laughs> Sir, what is your secret? She only likes you. Okay, this is progress. Maybe she's a happy cat now who will let us. <laughs> okay, never mind. So maybe Nanus doesn't get along with everyone and isn't the happiest kitty in the world. But that's okay. Now she's got grandpa. And that just shows that even the meanest cats still need their snuggles. Behold, I am Raggedy, and I am an extremely wild kitty. You think you're gonna like it here? Let me pet you. Okay, okay. And I intend to stay this way Forever. I've spent my whole life outside, but a certain someone thinks she rescued me. Ooh, look at that face. This girl's about as grumpy as they come. That's right, grumpy and wild for life. You're so cute. She lets me touch her head. What are you doing? Get that finger away from me. Ugh, fine, but you're lucky I'm in this blanket. Does anyone else hear that noise? Anyway, don't get too excited. I'm still as wild as they come. Ooh, she looks messy. Okay, petting is one thing, but I don't do baths. Are you saying I'm dirty? How dare you? You know cats can bathe themselves, right? Right? You don't have to do this. What's happening to me? And why is this water turning brown? Am I melting? You did so good, Raggedy Ann. Oh. It's okay. You're okay. Everything's gonna be fine. That was the worst. But I do smell pretty good. And I'm still wild. In fact, I'm out of here. Wait, don't go anywhere. Now what? A brush? Just, just stop. Okay, enough. <sighs> Do you hear something? It's that noise again. Is, is that noise coming from inside me? Is this what happiness sounds like? Impossible! Look at this. Ow! Yeah. Okay, this was all very nice, but I'm still wild. 
I'm going back outside. Right after two more minutes. Eat your food, girlfriend. You want to feed me? Uh Uh-uh. No way. I catch my own food. Mm -mm, I'm not going to go away. Fine. It does smell pretty good. You let me pet you? I'll allow it. But know this. I will never play with your ridiculous toys. That's where I draw the line. Woo! Yippee! Woohoo! Do it again! Again! Over here! You saw nothing. Don't judge me. I hope you're satisfied. You've tried to convince me to live indoors for weeks. But I remain the most wild of cats. Observe. As I climb into your warm bed, snuggle, and demand more petting. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. This is a big deal. Wait a second. Am I... a cute little sweetie? (sighs) Okay, okay. I am raggedy, and I'm still pretty wild. But I also like people. I actually kind of love them. In fact, I like people so much, I'm gonna let this special person adopt me. What are you looking at? Don't make me purr at you. Shrimp the cat is a bad boy. Shrimp, 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 shrimp. He's destroying the house. Are you out of your mind? Why do you hate plants so much? Bad boy! Shrimp, I just got this one. You see that? You're making your dad cry. You're ruining everything he loves. Shrimp, get out of the bush. Do you know how any of this happened? These plants aren't even connected anymore. Wait, are you comforting him? That's actually very sweet. Good boy! You're snuggling and attacking him? Ah! Bad boy! Shrimp! Shrimp! No, not the silverware shrimp! Shrimp! What is going on over there? Shrimp! You can't climb that! And you shouldn't climb that, or that. Don't you have anything better to do? I guess, I guess you don't. Maybe a new friend would keep you busy. Look, it's sweet, innocent coconut. What a good boy. Hey, you be nice, shrimp. Shrimp, we do not eat the baby, okay? No eating the baby. There you go, giving him a little bath. Good boys. You're going to be best friend. Shrimp, no! He's just a little kitten. Bad boy. And don't you teach him any of your bad boy tricks. Just let him sleep. Oh wait, you're just licking him. Well, that's very cute. What a good boy. Looks like Coconut taught Shrimp how to be a good kitty. Now he's just a sweet- Oh my god, oh my god, no, 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 no. Wait, now Coconut's being naughty? Bad boy! Coconut! Now you're destroying everything too! Get out of here! Why are you in the bathtub? Get out! Bad boy! Excuse me! Shrimp! You taught him everything you know, didn't you? And now you're both bad! Stop chewing on power cords, man. Come on. Oh my god, stop playing with scissors. Bad boy! Aww. Aww. You're still a good boy, aren't you? 
And I guess you can be a good boy too. Even if you really are wild. You're just trying to have fun. But let's not have this kind of fun. Let's have this kind of fun. And this is okay too. Your dad loves you both. You bad, bad boys. Shrap! Help the kittens find the subscribe button.